In this video, I'm going to go over how to replace the pump seals on this Pentair Challenger commercial duty pool pump. And specifically, I'm going to, we're going to talk about replacing the motor shaft seals, this main seal here, and replacing this seal here on top of the strainer cover basket. So, the first thing to do to take this apart is to first of all, yeah, turn off your power to your pump, disconnect it, make sure there's no power, no way of getting power. And so we have this big ring clamp here, and we're gonna use, we're gonna, we're gonna undo the screw on this ring clamp and take this ring clamp apart. Now this one has just been taken apart very recently, so the things will kind of fall apart easily. But if you haven't taken it apart in a long time, you may, have, you may have to pry things apart a little bit more than I'm showing here. So take this knob, set it aside, and then remove this ring clamp here. And let's see if we can get it out of the way a little bit. Get it under the, under the, the pump housing there so it's not in the way anymore. And we're going to lift and rotate the pump out. You might have to twist a little bit to get it to unseat. Okay, here we go. Set it right there. This shroud around the impeller is held on by two screws on either side here. It just takes a quarter inch socket style hex to remove those or a flathead screwdriver. This, this housing is two pieces. Try to keep them together. It's just two pieces that go like that. And there's only one way of assembling them because there's a hole up here that mates into this kind of like pin up here. And so that's the only way it's gonna to go together. Nonetheless, I try to keep everything together with the screws. Now we're down to the impeller here. And there's a screw inside here, which you can see. And we're gonna remove that screw. That uses a 3 8 socket or a flathead. The socket is gonna be easier. This one is already gonna be a little bit loose, but the main thing to know about this one is this is a reverse thread. So you're going to turn clockwise to loosen it. to hold the impeller to keep it from spinning. Once you've loosened it up some, you can just keep turning. So I'm turning clockwise to remove the screw. Now if we come over to the back side of the motor, there's a cap here that covers the shaft. So turn that cap counterclockwise and then remove it, pull it out. It's like a quarter turn and pull it out. You're going to find the now you can access the drive shaft here. So you're going to have to grab this drive shaft with a pair of flat pliers or an open ended wrench. Don't use pliers that have teeth on them, it's just going to do damage to it. So you're going to be holding that one side while turning the impeller by hand on the other side to loosen it. Now, if the impeller is on too tight, you could use a strap wrench to undo it. So it's just to unscrew the impeller, it's like a normal thread, so you turn it counterclockwise to unscrew it while holding the shaft on the back so the motor doesn't spin. Now we see the space where the shaft seal lives. So the first layer here is this layer that's a, is this one that spins with the shaft. So this first seal spins with the shaft, it has a spring on it, and you're going to pull that off. Now it might be hard to pull off because some little bit of rust gets in there. So again, use a pair of good pliers. In this case, it doesn't really matter if you wreck this trying to take it off because you're gonna be replacing this piece. So you can use a pair of pliers that have teeth on them and wiggle it off, turn it off. You can, again, you can hold the back of the shaft and try to spin, try to rotate it and stuff to try to get it off and pull it off. Just don't damage the shaft of the motor while you're at it. So this, This part of the seal rotates with the shaft. It has a rubber gasket in there, which you can see here is torn, which is probably why 
some um, a lot of water some a lot of water was coming out and so it's coming out through that because it's, it's bypassing the ceramic seal so this is a piece of ceramic very hard very wear resistant and it rubs on this other piece of ceramic here to create a seal ceramics against ceramic seal that uh, then seals off the rotating component of the pump and then this rubber in here is supposed to um, keep the water inside of the pump and allow for any uh, compliance that's necessary to uh, while the pump is running and this gasket in here seals off against the pump shaft so we've got the pump shaft seal right here this kind of bellows seal in there and then that's made it to the ceramic seal and the ceramic seal on the motor in housing or the pump housing is the final seal there. That's the final rotating seal, that ceramic seal on the pump housing. Now that we've taken the seal off the motor shaft, we got to come back here and we're going to have to remove the rest of this pump housing from the motor. So here we got these bolts in the back. There's four of them. So you're going to have to just undo these bolts. Once they get loose enough, you can rapidly do them by hand like this. and remove these bolts and set them aside. With the bolts removed from the pump housing, so the, so the pump housing is free from the motor, now we can just pull this forward. And we, the only part we have left to remove is this ceramic seal that's in the pump housing. This can be, I can remove it with my hand now because I just, it's been removed earlier. And uh, if you need to, you can, use a flathead screwdriver in the back here and knock it out with a flathead screwdriver. I had to do that the first time because it was stuck in there pretty hard. I'm using this pool and spa lube purchased from Leslie's where we got the kit to rebuild this pump housing. And this is for use on O-rings, gaskets, valves, threaded parts, anything in the pool and, pool and spa that it, uh, this is safe for. So I've already put some in here a little bit in this area where the, the new seal is going to be going down into. And the one thing I read to be very careful of is to not touch the ceramic surfaces on the new seals because the oils from your fingers can cause issues. Uh, that was surprising to me, but uh, just don't touch it. Use some plastic or a rag, to, a clean rag to install it or to a paper towel or something when you go to install that in there. But uh, first, it's a good idea to apply some of this uh, lubricant in here. So, I'm just going to reapply this. There's already plenty in there now. These are the new seal parts. And the model, looks like the model number for this is 200V. Here's the UPC code. These seal parts uh, have a shaft diameter of 0.625 or 5 8 shaft diameter and they fit they're designed to fit inside of this um, Pentair Challenger pump housing so I'm going to be careful and not touch that ceramic I was talking about use a paper towel to push it down in there and it seats perfectly well okay the instructions said to Remove any rust on the shaft or other metal parts before reassembling using a fine sandpaper or emery cloth. So here we go. Just gonna clean this off a little bit. And after sanding, make sure you clean off the shaft really well and remove all the sanding grit or residue. You don't want any grit getting anywhere. Applying a little bit of this lubricant to the shaft probably won't hurt. All 
Okay, so now we're going to reinstall this pump housing motor mount plate. So slide this over the shaft. And we're going to screw it on from the back using the screws, using the bolts actually, these bolts. Now we take this new shaft seal, the one that attaches onto the shaft, that actually seals off against the shaft here. That's the rubber bellows in there. It has a ceramic ring right here. We're gonna take that, we're gonna place it with the black ceramic ring, that step going and touching the white ceramic on the back. It should slide right on there. Whoops, and be careful. This seal, shaft seal wanted to come off a little bit. Let's put this on here first. Let's see if we can get the shaft seal on there. There we go. Now the shaft seal is on. Now we're going to screw the impeller back on. So here are the threads of the impeller. I'm going to clean the surface off here first a little bit with some with emery cloth again, just to remove any excess corrosion. Make sure to wipe it off really well with a cloth afterwards. Clean up all the sanding dust, particulates. Adding a little bit of lubricant to this area won't, won't hurt anything. and then screw it back on to the motor shaft. So you're gonna turn it clockwise to screw it on. Take your pliers or open it a wrench again and hold the back of the motor while you hand tighten this. Doesn't have to be super tight. You don't wanna over tighten and break anything. Just hand tight is good. Okay, I feel I'm gonna take this impeller screw and put it inside the hole in the impeller this one is a opposite thread, so we're going to turn it counterclockwise to tighten it. So we'll turn it counterclockwise to tighten. And then I'm going to lightly tighten this with my socket wrench. Okay. Now we have to put the impeller housing back on. Remember that there's two layers that are sandwiched together. And there's an arrow that points up right here to the top. and just lightly tighten those screws. You don't want to over tighten these either and break anything. Okay, check to see that the impeller and motor are still turning. There's no rubbing anywhere. Seems good. We also got the diffuser O-ring. So we're gonna go ahead and replace that on the front here. I'm gonna add some lubricant to that that space there and to the o-ring itself so let's put some lubricant in here While this pump housing is disassembled, we're going to replace this seal plate ring for the Pentair. 
And that's this ring that goes around right here. Take out the old one. Clean out this groove. That needs to be fixed too. And also lubricate this area in here where that o-ring is going to go in too. Now once all the o-rings are in place then we can go ahead and put this uh, pump back on back together. Slide this clamp back on there. 